What the fuck? Yeah, it's there, it's there guys. So, Sinister, Sinister Podcast is returning again to this channel. Uh, we again have our dear guest, Antoine Mastoriani from Internal Septenary, a uh, really dedicated magician, devotee of Belial and many other spirits. Uh, he recently showed me a really powerful way of, of empiric transformation, and he is one of the few people here who are yeah. real, deal, real deal, and he managed to transform yeah. himself greatly. How are you, Antoine? Nice to see you again. It's very nice to see you again, and it's an honor to be here. Um, I've been good, just working with a few different deities, uh, Mars and recently Venus included. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more about Mars and Venus from your experience? Well, I've been working with Mars for about a month um, to achieve a goal, which is to become a fighter, boxer, kickboxer, in order to have fights as offerings for not just Mars, but the spirits. One thing I find with Mars is he will not only increase your drive and passion for a subject that you're working upon with him, but if you do end up working with Mars, he doesn't exactly want offerings or an altar built for him. He's very physically based. I find that when you go to a gym, the Temple of Mars, any sort of gym, your workout is an offering and devotion to Mars in a way to connect to him. When you feel his energy fill you as you work out, you will train 10 times more intense. You will burn fat like crazy. You will literally be sweating your fat out and your power and speed will be increased. You will also gain the mindset of a warrior, so to speak. You will be more astrally um, deadly defense and offense wise. And one thing I found that he gave me was his shield, um, an astral shield to use for defense against curses, astral attacks. And when you wield this shield, you are filled with the energy of Mars, which is red Martian energy. You will literally see and feel your energy and aura expand and create a fiery red aura, which can also affect the others around you to be more competitive around you. So, okay, can you tell us a little bit more about how you started working with Mars? Uh, what kind of experience of people who work with Mars and how it kind of influenced you more, like more in detail? Well, as I got back into fighting recently, I did a very big war empowerment with not only Mars, Mars showed up for it and I channeled the sigil in an N, but I did it with Ishtar, Asmodeus, Abaddon, Belial, Lucifer. This was a very big ritual to empower me war-wise. And shortly after that, Mars stepped up and was like, I will be the next spirit in your path working. I will be leading your training for fighting and I will make you a worthy warrior. And the one thing I would tell people to expect when working with Mars is he's not very easygoing. He can be harsh. He will push you to your limit. He will push you to your limits. Um, this being said, if your training is not substantial enough, he will sort of stand next to you and tell you to keep pushing, keep pushing, go the extra mile, go the extra intensity. So that's what I have to say about uh, what to expect working with Mars. Okay. okay. So can you, can you tell us more about that reel of the fighting? thrill of battle and how it serves as an offering to Mars, because this is a concept many people don't understand. Um, could you repeat that question, please? So can you tell us how that thrill of the fighting serves as an offering to Mars? Because that's a concept many people don't understand. Um, well, fighting in a ring is going to be the actual offering for Mars. And it shows that you have the warrior spirit. You have the warrior mindset. You actually have the courage to step into a ring. And the actual bloodshed from the fight is an offering. You're spilling your opponent's blood 
in honor for Mars. And it's very well known that he was um, the patron spirit for the Roman legions as well and protector of the harvest and all these other things. So it sort of stems back to there as well. They fought for Mars and with Mars and in his honor as well. Yeah, yeah. So technically, what is the character of a ritual you use to contact? Um, I usually just use a sigil and then I'll light a red candle for him and some incense, preferably, um, out of my own accord. And I will leave it there, chant the N, focus on the sigil, and he will usually come. But the most strongest time he comes is during training, um, when you're boxing, lifting weights, running, when you're in the actual temple of Mars, which is the gym. Okay. So can you tell us more about your work with Venus? As a being? I've actually only had contact with Venus the past two days. Um, I was ignoring Venus for a little bit. It had certain signs come about. I actually was in a store and uh, saw the word Venus on the sign for a product. And I, a day before that, someone was telling me I should work with Venus and build an altar for Venus. So Venus was coming to me. And what I find with Venus is when she fills you with her pink energy, you will actually become somewhat more emotional, uh, empathetic, and she can heal things that are somewhat traumatic in matters of lust, the heart chakra. If you've been in a bad relationship, if you've been hurt before or burned before, so to speak, she can heal that. It's not a comfortable process healing, of course, but it is a, a very needed process. Um, any blockages within the heart chakra will literally bleed out and she will feed pink energy into the heart chakra. Okay, so that's really interesting. That you felt Venus, Venus has pink energy. Okay. So, how your kind of previous demonic path working fit into this? Do you find any connection between demonic entities and the Roman gods? Or how do you uh, observe the two after this experience? I believe there is somewhat a connection to the demonic entities and Mars um, and Venus. But the actual energies of the beings does not feel infernal. It is actually not even celestial. It's its, its own current, so to speak. Um, but there is a definite connection between Lucifer, Venus and Mars, I feel. I cannot determine what type of connection, but they do associate with each other. They do talk with each other and work together. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What I kinda, so there is something I kind of wanted to say regarding all of this. So essentially the guys from NASA, they were like listening to the planets, filming the planets. And they figure out that every planet has its own vibration, its own sound. And so those gods could be like a manifestations of those planetary radiations, or they could be like spirits who govern how that planetary radiation influences us, and they channel that planetary radiation into our lives. But those gods also seem to be like forces, like currents, which transcend those planets. And they are like strings which flow through the entire existence, in a way. So, I'm interested because there is like a practical notion of... So, the guy or the girl who told you to build an altar, to Venus, how she advised you to build an altar? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? She didn't actually advise me because I sort of passed up the opportunity because I was ignoring Venus for a little bit because um, I was sort of busy with Mars and other deities and other projects and other things. But it's interesting you mentioned the actual vibrations of the planet because the other day I was looking at the sounds of the planets, um, the sounds of Saturn, the sounds of Mars, the sounds of Venus, and thinking of actually utilizing them in rituals um, 
even as a fight walking music are uh, utilizing the sound of Mars. And so how the sound of Mars influenced you? Pardon? Uh, how the sound of Mars influenced you? Um, it made me feel very dominant, I'll say that. It makes you feel like you want to just jump in, so to speak, jump into action. It makes you feel ready. It makes you feel tough as well. I'll put it that way. It's hard to describe it in words, but when you feel it, you'll know you feel like you're about to walk into battle, so to speak. Okay. So that's really useful for the audience. Uh, and for me too, I could like film some videos using those sounds and then adding my chanting and at the top of those. I think it will be a really good for audience. But what uh, what I kind of wanted to ask you, because you worked with angels in the past, right? And you definitely worked with Samael, and Samael is kind of Archangel of Mars, right? And now you worked with the god Mars. What's kind of difference between two approaches to that energy? Hmm. Approaching Samael is very different from approaching Mars. Samael, um, he will push you in a different way compared to Mars. He will sort of actively try to fuck you up, so to speak. When I worked with Samael briefly, um, he sent a bunch of spirits to me as a test to fight them. And if I could win, I could um, sort of have these spirits in servitude, so to speak, somewhat like familiars. Um, that's sort of how I found my experience with Samael. He will test you literally in a do or die way. But that's not to say he can't be kind as well. Samael can be quite kind at the same time. It's very interesting, I find. Okay. okay. So can you tell us like what was your latest demonic path working uh, with demonic entities? Because you are pretty adept at that as well. Um, at this point in time, I swap back and forth working with men that I've worked with. Um, so it's a bit, it's a bit messy at the moment. Uh, but lately I've been sort of channeling from Abaddon curses. One curse that I did uh, was a very interesting one. There, I'm not going to name names, but there was someone that I knew. And this person admitted something that he did to me. Right. And right after he admitted to me, I felt Abaddon forcefully trying to possess me. And I warned him, whatever happens, happens. Just stand back. And I crawled to a spot in his living quarters, I'll say, uh, where he actually did what he admitted to me. And I didn't even know this was a spot to laughter. And I was chanting all sorts of things. He he believed it was Arabic or something. Um, but he he was sort of in the corner like this, like, you know, because I was making very inhuman noises and such. Literally very shortly after that, he had extreme poltergeist activity in his house, uh, doors slamming, things bumping around. He had things tormenting him. Um, Something actually happened to him that I won't mention on here because it might not be good to mention on YouTube. But in the end, he, he brought a priest into his house and the priest, he believed the priest tried to do something to him. So he ended up chasing the priest out of his house uh, with a weapon and having to move house and everything. Later on, many, many months after, Abaddon explains to me that what we did that night was open a portal in his location in his living quarters that allows spirits of the underworld, spirits of the dead, and even angry ancestors, because some people have ancestors that may not be happy with them, depending on what they're doing in their life, especially if they're not particularly a very, uh, how do I put this, good person, right? And these spirits were actively punishing him, tormenting him. So this curse 
really all it is is opening a portal for all these spirits, angry ancestors to come and wreak wrath and vengeance upon the person. Okay, so this is something really interesting. So technically, can you tell us more about your working with Abaddon? Because you seem to work with Abaddon for a really long time, and you and I met through Abaddon technically, and Abaddon is really a significant spirit in your practice. So working with Abaddon is very, very interesting. He holds the keys to this, the keys to unlimited potential. Any potential that you have within you, be it psychic gifts, um, any other type of gifts, he can unlock. This is also acquainted to his Plutonian energy. For example, he really unlocked my ability for possession, and he's the one spirit I work uh, mostly with uh, in possession. Another thing that he does, he's very acquainted with this, uh, Saturn. He holds the scythe of Saturn, and he can give this as an astral weapon. It's a very deadly astral weapon that, when used, will cause physical harm to the target. Um, I've used this weapon before, and it produced great results. Okay, so uh, uh, like I want to ask for uh, so. How Abaddon can be appeased, essentially? How one can reach greater connection of union with Abaddon? I have a meditation from him. I've shared this before in the Cult of Belial uh, YouTube channel. Um, basically, you sit and get in the meditative state. You visualize the sigil, pulsing like a neon light and stabilizing in front of you. You open your third eye. You should feel pressure and tendrils coming from your third eye and tendrils coming out of the sigil these will actively do it on their own and you picture them and visualize them and feel them merging into one and going into each other and when you do this you'll feel extreme pressure on your third eye and you swap energies from your third eye it will go into the sigil and energy will come from the sigil into you you're swapping energies with the actual uh, current and consciousness of the spirit. This will greatly increase connection to Abaddon or any other spirit that is, and it can be used for evocation, invocation, etc. So, technically, you know, uh, I kind of know that you offered animal sacrifice to Ashmadai before, so can you tell us what was that entire experience, uh, how it feel, felt? that entire animal sacrifice experience. That was something I, I'm a very uh, empathetic person, I suppose. And it was not a, the most pleasant of experiences for me. Um, it's brought me some pain, but that is part of the sacrifice, I suppose, to experience that. Um, it was an interesting experience, I will say, none the least. Yeah, and I want you to just say uh, how the spirit reacted to the offering. Did his presence intensify? Was the manifestation stronger? What happened afterwards and, and, and everything? Because this is an episode that is pretty relevant to what I'm doing right now, so. Well, I did this for somewhat of a trade um, to receive two very powerful familiars from Asmodeus, um, spirits of lust that actually affect the chemicals in the brain of the target to perceive you differently, um, the hormones in the target, and one that does extreme glamour magic upon you. The relationship with Asmodeus intensified greatly after that, um, his energy comes through very strongly after that. So I didn't really have much of a connection with him before that, but after it, it this connection uh, greatly increased. Okay, so that's something people should listen to, because when I say this, people tell me I am crazy or something. So, I wanted also to ask, like, what is your kind of main uh, method for people 
in general who want to work with Abaddon, what is the main principle you think they should follow? Be prepared for a lot of things to crumble. He's a very destructive spirit, right? So whatever you have in your life that is not needed anymore, whatever you have that is a weakness, so to speak, he will cause great chaos and amplify until it is actually destroyed or transmuted, possibly even both. That's what I found when I first worked with him. Uh, extreme shadow work, a very extreme and destructive shadow work will occur if you're not acclimated to his energy or current. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, is there any way you advise your people to kind of build up their astral strength? Any exercise to build up their astral strength? Astral strength or astral senses? Strength, strength. Hmm. Work with Martian energy. Call upon the energy of Mars the red energy and have it fill your astral double and fill your aura, you will feel your astral double actually bulk up and not become enraged, but become ready, sturdy and strong. This is great for astral battles. Okay. Okay. So for the last version of this video can you tell us what and you use to call mars if that's possible yeah sure i'll get my book it's in my book here So the end call upon Mars is or dia emporia textor Mars. I don't know if you can see this, but that is the situation. Okay, okay. so guys, Antoine shared with us really powerful shit. You have a chant of Mars, you have a sigil of Mars, you have a bunch of experiences, you guys. So this is essentially really potent magician, really potent interview. If you want to reach him, the link is in the description. His contact is in the description. And also, if you like this video, uh, subscribe and share this video as well. And like this for the YouTube algorithm too. We would really appreciate it. And Antoine, do you have any last message for the audience? for the people who are working with Be honorable. Honor your spirits, honor your path, and make sure to always honor yourself. Yeah, yeah. We, we really need to be honorable on this path. Honor is the most important thing. Keeping your roles, keeping your promises is the most important thing. So yeah, thank you. Antoine for being with us today. Thank you guys for watching and we will see each other tomorrow soon.